Charles Spencer made headlines recently after saying that he felt well, a bit uneasy about his sister, Princess Diana's portrayal in The Crown. And he also asked for an apology from the BBC, an inquiry to be launched into the Panorama interview with Martin Bashir, claiming that he was tricked into introducing his sister to him. Well, today, Charles joins me from his family's residence as he releases a new book. It's called The White Ship. Before we talk about The, the White Ship, I just, I'm sure you'll want to join all of us to send best wishes to Megan and, of course, to, to, to your nephew, Harry, because um, today we just found out the very sad news that she'd had a miscarriage, and it's just terribly sad, isn't it? It is, Lorraine. I mean, I can't imagine the agony for any couple of... Uh, losing a child in this way and it's so very very sad and of course I totally agree with you uh, all thoughts with them today very much so very much so um it's been a, a strange old time for you hasn't it it has been quite um you know you've been working away you've been writing this the, the white ship which I actually read in a winner um, and I had no idea about this part of history and um, it's about Henry the Henry the first who was on the throne and then one incident one ship goes down and the whole of history has changed. It's so true. And, you know, today is the 900th anniversary of what I like to call a sort of the, the mixture between Titanic and Game of Thrones, because this one ship goes down with the only possible male heir to the throne. And it throws England into complete chaos uh, for 15 years and then, and then a total anarchy for 19 years. And at the end of it, all because the prince, uh, the, the king's only legitimate son, dies in this tragic shipwreck where we have one man's eyewitness account, a butcher on board who, who watched the ship go down. Uh, it's all because of that, that we end up with the Plantagenets on the throne for 350 years before the Tudors bump them off. So yeah, one tragic accident in the channel and we end up with a complete change in history. It is quite remarkable and it is and for you I mean I know you love to write these books you love the whole the whole research you love all of that you know delving into this but actually you are going to go and dive and try and find this wreck I am I think it's optimistic to be honest because it is 900 years ago and it was made of wood but we've done the scientific research a, a, a very interesting American guy Roger Michel he 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 funds this sort of research and we know the white ship had certain sort of nails or rivets holding the planks together. And we're diving down there uh, mid-December. Uh, I'm going to be getting into a, a very, very thick wetsuit uh, in the channel in mid-December to try and find anything that's left of this, this, as I say, the medieval Titanic. I love stories like that. I really do. I mean, talk about change in history. I mean, your, your, your sister really changed history. I mean, for, to the world, she was Princess Diana, this amazing global superstar. But she was, your, she was your big sister and she did change things. And of course, we have been reading a lot about the Panorama interview and it was 25 years ago. And you've been very passionate about this. And I just wonder why at this time you've decided to, to take action because you know, it is quarter of a century ago, but obviously it's very, very important to you. Yes, Lorraine, there's a fair question here. Why wait 25 years? Well, I, I had formed my own opinion of the journalist uh, quite a long time ago, and I, I knew what he had done to a certain extent. But it was only because of this anniversary that various TV uh, production companies were looking into the real depths of what went on. And they got the Freedom of Information Act, which made the BBC release certain papers. And these were really, they really shook me up, not just confirmation of what had happened behind the scenes, but also who knew and why it hadn't come out and why it hadn't been dealt with. So there's not an enormous amount I can say because the matter has gone to inquiry and my lawyers are very keen that I don't muddy the waters. But I think it's very important for people to realise what this isn't about. This isn't me saying that Diana should or shouldn't have spoken. I'm not, that is, that was uh, uh, something separate. But what I am saying is that in my view, the BBC have very, very serious questions to answer on this. And I was shocked and appalled. And do you know what? Diana has stood up for me a lot as my elder sister when I was a kid. And um, I'm, I'm very happy to do this for her and, and ultimately, if if I can get an apology out of the BBC for everything uh, that they did around this, then, then I will feel semi-vindicated. And I know that, that William and Harry, both of them, um, which would be a lovely way of bringing them together, both of them are standing behind you too. It's the family is very, very much united in this. But as you say, you can't say too much about that right now because there is this ongoing inquiry, of course. I wonder if you have, like, 
all of us uh, all around the world if you watch The Crown or would it be just too painful for you to watch that? Do you know, I, I'm not a big Crown watcher, to be honest. I mean, I think I've caught a couple of episodes in, in the past. I haven't caught any of the current series, although uh, my wife watched it. Um, and I did catch a news clip here of, uh, of the, the, the actress portraying Diana, so I do know a little bit. I, I think my general point about The Crown, it, it is a general one. You know, I write history. I, I, I brand what I write as nonfiction, and that is what, if somebody reads something I've written, then they know that's what they're getting, and that's the same with all historians. I, I think it would help The Crown an enormous amount if at the beginning of each episode it stated mm. that this isn't true, uh, but it's based around some real events, because then, then everyone would understand that this is drama for drama's sake, and obviously Netflix want to make lots of money. Uh, that's why people are in the business of making these things. Um, but I, I, I worry that people do think that this is sort of gospel, and, and that, that's unfair. You know, there's no other thing that hu humans consume. If, if we buy something in the supermarket, we can look on the package and see what we're getting. Mm. Uh, I, I feel very strongly, and I've been thinking this for a couple of years, not just with The Crown, actually. Uh, I remember the movie Titanic, the DiCaprio movie. There was a, a, one of the officers on board the original, the true Titanic is seen behaving in a cowardly way and named, and that's, that was very upsetting to his descendants. And I just think, you know, what I do know with the current episode of The Crown, which I found very upsetting, is that my Scottish uh, grandmother, uh, was portrayed in this particularly unpleasant way. And that is not what she was like. And do you know, my grandmother may be long gone, sadly, but she still has a daughter alive and still has 10 grandchildren alive. And is it fair for people to be destroyed in that way? I, I don't think so, really. That is a very, very fair point, actually. And I think that the, maybe the trouble with it is, is I found it so close because I remember it. But there's a whole generation who are growing up who probably didn't, you know, who obviously didn't live through that. And they're taking it from the crown and they're thinking, well, that's the way that it happened. And I suppose that's, you know, that's part of the problem. I mean, in a way, it brings it to a, a whole new generation, just what we lost. Um, when sadly Diana died. It's so true, Lorraine. And, and, you know, we're British, so we grew up with certain things on our TV and the news, etc. So with The Crown, I gather that um, Margaret Thatcher is very strongly there, etc. So, But we, we, we have already put Margaret Thatcher into context in our minds, or Diana, or whoever it is, you know. But for a global audience, which, you know, this is a hugely globally significant series, uh, and for any movie that does this, you know, it's... It's playing fast and loose with with history without saying that. Nobody cares if they say, well, this is uh, what we're going to make of it, whether it's a movie or a TV series. But you just have to be honest with the consumer. I've actually hilariously had quite a lot of abuse on social media from Americans who think I'm saying they're ignorant. I'm not saying they're ignorant at all. I'm married to an American, so I wouldn't dare. <laughs> but the point is that they are uh, consuming something with the assumption that it's very, very accurate. And, uh, well, from what I know, and I, I, I don't know most of these scenes because I wasn't there, but from the bits I do know, no, it's not accurate. And that's not just The Crown. That's an awful lot of stuff we're yeah. consuming and just on the assumption that it's correct. And I have to say, as a historian, uh, I, 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 it makes you even more upset, mm. actually. If you write historical fiction, look, look at Hilary Mantel's marvellous books, Wolf Hall, etc., they don't lose anything by everyone knowing that they're historical fiction, but she's absolutely honest that they are fiction uh, based on fact and, and that doesn't lose anything uh, and it gains an enormous amount because you can respect it. No that's very true and as you've said in the white ship it just takes one thing that can happen that can change the whole course of history. Thank you so much for talking to us. The book's out now. Good luck with the dive and make sure that that wetsuit <laughs> is very, very thick and good luck with that Thank and let us know how that goes. That's absolutely fascinating. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us this morning. I really appreciate it. I, it was a great pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.